Hi everyone, it's been a really long time since I've had a chance to talk to you. And I'm really excited to share a word I believe is from the Lord, a prophetic word, a now word from the Lord for this month of November. And you'll probably hear my cat meowing in the background because she's hungry. But this word, the Lord spoke to me from Joel chapter 2, 25 through 27. And when I heard it in my spirit, I knew beyond a shadow of a doubt that this was from the Lord. So I want to share that with you. I'm going to read the scripture and then I'm going to really um, unpack this for you. And I believe it's going to do something very new inside of your spirit. So this is um, the prophet Joel speaking as the, as the Lord is speaking through him. Chapter 2, verses 25 through 27. So I will restore to you the years that the swarming locust has eaten, the crawling locust, the consuming locust, and the chewing locust, my great army, which I sent among you. You shall eat in plenty and be satisfied, and, the, and praise the name of the Lord your God, who has dealt wondrously with you. And my people shall never be put to shame. Then you shall know that I am in the midst of Israel. I am the Lord your God, and there is no other. So I want to tell you right up front that I'm going to, um, I've dug deep into this. And I, I just really believe this is a gold mine of, um, of importance for you. And we're just going to allow the Holy Spirit to uncover the deep riches of this word for you. And when we're done, I assure you, you're going to be strengthened in a new way. This is, this is a prophetic word that I'm declaring over you. And be assured that the Holy Spirit's going to show up and he's going to overwhelm you with his mercies and his love. And this word, I believe, is going to shift you into a new place in the Lord. Your hunger for the Lord will exceed your wildest expectations. I believe that. So get ready to be launched into a new spiritual dimension with the Lord. You see, Jesus has been longing for, a, for deeper encounters with you. And, you know, he doesn't want to just take you to the well for a drink. He wants to immerse you in the fountain of life. So um, let's jump in with both feet, and, um, and know that there has been an acceleration in the Spirit. And how do I know that? Well, because the Lord allows me to see into the spiritual realm. And if you remember, the prophetic word that I gave for the year of 2017, back in January, was, it, was about acceleration. And if you remember, I was seeing in the natural lots of uh, red cars, red trucks, in a very short period of time. Well, since, and then I didn't see any, you know, that was, that was January. Then, you know, that pretty much kind of closed down and I didn't see anything in the natural until August and, and it's just kicked up again. Now this time I'm only seeing red trucks. I'm not seeing red cars. I'm just seeing bright, I'm seeing the brightest, shiniest red trucks and red semi trucks. So, um, if you know anything about dreams, visions, you know that trucks and really big trucks mean refer to ministry. So, um, I'm not goofy. I'm not nutty. Um, he just shows me things in the natural realm with my natural eye, and when I see that and I hear his voice, then I know that he's speaking to me. Uh, by the spirit about the spiritual realm. So what does this mean? Seeing red trucks, what does that mean? It means that he's really accelerating things in the spiritual realm. And what does that actually mean for you and me? It means this. It means the harvest is ripe. Uh, he's got to get his church ready. And that means you and I have to get ready for the harvest. harvest and we have to be ready to labor in his vineyard. We have to get strong in the word. There's a couple of things that we need to do. We need to get strong in the word. 
We need to increase our intimate time with the Lord and very get very close to Jesus. And why is that? So that we will be prepared for the outpouring of His Spirit. Now, have you ever wondered why lately, in the last year at least, there's been so much violence and unrest in our nation? Well, the enemy knows what's about to come. So he does everything he knows to do. He disrupts, he brings chaos, he brings fear, he causes discouragement among the church people. He, he gets them distracted to come down off the wall. They lose the fight, they become weakened and unable to be effective for the kingdom. And, and if he's really successful, you and I will not be a useful tool in the hand of the master. So this is the time. And I want to be clear, this is the time to stay on the potter's wheel. Don't jump off. Let the master refine you. Let him purge your sins. Let him mend and heal the broken areas of your heart. We need to surrender to the potter. And if you let him, he will take your brokenness, all your broken parts, and he will beautifully recast you so that you are a new piece of clay, a new pot. So just say to yourself, I'm coming out a new shiny pot. Now, this is what the Lord wants to do. He wants to create a new shiny pot that can hold the living water of his presence. So no more broken cisterns that cannot hold water. Amen? All right, so I want to talk to you then about Joel 2, 25 through 27. I'm going to read that again to you. I want you to just really pay close attention to what the prophet is saying. Um, hang on a minute. I lost my, my place. Okay, so... I will restore, this is what he's saying in the book of Joel, I will restore to you. Receive this as if the Lord's speaking to you personally. So I will restore to you the years that the swarming locust has eaten, the crawling locust, the consuming locust, and the chewing locust. My great army which I set among you, you shall eat in plenty and be satisfied. And praise the name of the Lord your God, who has dealt wondrously with you, and my people shall never be put to shame. Then you will know that I am in the midst of Israel. I am the Lord your God, and there is no other. My people shall never be put to shame. So I want to start by explaining the different locusts. And in the natural, this is actually how it works, and then we're going to talk about the spiritual. So I'm referencing an author by the name of David Guzik, who wrote that in 1915, so this is, this is recent, not like real recent, but 1915, a devastating plague of locusts covered what is now modern-day Israel and Syria. And the first swarms came in March, and they came in clouds so thick that they blocked out the sun. And this is, this is the process. The female locusts immediately begin to lay eggs, a hundred at a time. And in one square yard, they will lay as many as 65,000 to 75,000 eggs. It's a lot of eggs. In a few weeks, they hatch, and then the young locusts resemble large ants. They cannot fly yet, so they crawl along. And as they crawl along, they march 400 to 600 feet a day devouring every speck of vegetation along the way. After two more stages of molting, they become adults that can fly, and the devastation continues. Now, the prophet Joel was speaking to Judah because the locust had been so destructive and its effect so unusual that this is what Joel says in chapter 1 of Joel, verse 3. He says, tell your children about it, about, th about this plague. And let your children tell their children and their children another generation. In other words, tell them what the locusts have done. You see, the, 
the times were so remarkably difficult that parents would tell their children, I've lived through the plagues of the locusts. Now, what was the effect of these swarming, crawling, chewing, and consuming locusts? Well, the major effect was the lack of food. All the crops were eaten and consumed. Imagine that many locusts crawling along four to 600 feet a day, devouring everything in sight. So if all the crops are eaten and consumed, then there will be a famine. And that would be, bring difficulty in surviving, not just physically, but financially as well. Because if you owned a business, you're going to go out of business. There would be a lack of money to go elsewhere to even buy food. Physical illnesses would become common, even starvation leading to death. And it really couldn't get any worse. But the Lord speaking through Joel says... I will restore, and I'm paraphrasing, so listen carefully. I will restore the years that all these locusts have caused. In other words, all the hardships you've endured and all the loss you've incurred, I will restore. In the King James Version, one of the worms is called a palmer worm. And I was reading to you out of the New King James in Hebrew, this word means to cut off. And that's exactly what happened to the people in the southern king of Judah. They were cut off from food, finances, health, and hope. They were simply cut off from everything and any means of help or relief. Cut off from resources or any way out of this horrible situation. But the prophet brings hope and encouragement when he says, By the Spirit of the Lord, I will restore the years of loss and heartache, years of devastation and destruction, years of hardship and sickness. I will restore all that those years stole from you. That is the kind of God we serve. He will restore. Now there is a beautiful Hebrew name. And it's a name I was not familiar with before, and maybe you haven't heard it either. But it's Yahweh El Ashib. And it means the Lord my restorer, or the Lord who restores. Yahweh El Ashib. And that is a name that you and I need to become familiar with because this is part of God's character. And that's important to us. Now Psalm 23 the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Psalm 23, verse 3 says of the Lord, he, will, he restores my soul. And that word restores means he refreshes my soul, he repairs my soul, he gives back in payment, he causes me to have a payback, he recompenses me, he recovers on my behalf, he retrieves that which was taken, to have a comeback spiritually, physically, and relationally. Relationally. And this is what the Lord restore in Hebrew, that word shub, means. So Yahweh El Ashib is the Lord who refreshes your soul, who repairs your soul, your heart. He's the one who pays you back what you lost financially. He recompenses you, meaning that what the enemy stole illegally, he will make sure you get it back. He recovers what has been stolen, your finances, your health, your relationships. He recovers and retrieves what you have lost. Maybe your job, maybe your spouse, your children, your mental well-being, your physical health. Some of you have been damaged emotionally, maybe through the trauma of rape, the trauma of incest, the trauma of physical and verbal abuse, the trauma of neglect. These are overwhelming traumas, and it's almost unthinkable. Some of you have su suffered uh, debilitating diseases, horrible pain, and chronic mental illness, depression, bipolar. Some of you have suffered the loss of your job, your income. Maybe you've even lost your home for whatever reason. 
And some of you struggle to make ends meet. Some of you have lost relationships. Maybe you lost a spouse to death or they've just decided to leave. Maybe your children are wayward. Your siblings don't speak to you. There's a falling out with parents, children, siblings, friends. I want you to listen to me. This is what the Lord says. He will restore all the years of loss and devastation. He is Yahweh El Ashib. The Lord is your restorer. And it is time to call on the name of the Lord. Just call on him. You don't have to remember Yahweh El Ashib. Just remember, Lord, you are my restorer. And stand in steadfast faith today that everything will be restored all that it rightfully belongs to you will be restored now this is the best part so don't turn me off now the regular dictionary meaning of restoration means to return something back to its original form but the biblical definition of restoration means to receive back more and the key word here is more so much more than has been lost to the point where the final state is greater than the original condition. How about that? So biblically, we don't just get what's restored back to us. We get more. We get greater than the original condition. More than. Improved beyond measure. So you have to get excited about this because Yahweh El Ashiib is your, is your restorer and everything that was cut off. Remember the palmer worm means to cut off. Everything that was cut off is going to be restored. Finances that were cut off, restored. Health cut off, restored. Job loss, restored. Relationships cut off, restored. Your business pursuits cut off, restored. Your personal dreams cut off, restored. Restored, recovered, recompensed, retrieved. Yahweh El Ashib. I beg you to call on his name. Thank him in advance. This is a now season that he will restore. God will restore Yahweh El Ashaib. I trust that you will call on his name and believe and stand that he will restore everything back even greater than what it originally was. Amen? Amen. Bless you. And I look forward to talking to you again.